What is up everyone and welcome to some more F123 My Team Career Mode and we're here, here for our round number 12 right of season 6 of our Jaguar Racing career and we're going to be at the Belgian Grand Prix but before we do anything it's time for teammate renegotiations with Charles Leclerc. He's been outstanding this season, he's just two points behind us in the Drivers' Championship at the moment. Of course we're going to go for the low risk offer, we do not want to do anything to piss him off and we've got our man, he's going to be here for the next 12 races of the season till the end of the season and hopefully he'll be able to help us lead the team to construct his glory for the first time in its history. We're going to renew with our sponsors as we usually do. The field is super competitive so I don't want to go for a bunch of really aggressive high sponsorship targets and uh, yeah now we can turn our attention towards the Belgian Grand Prix but last time out we were at the French Grand Prix. We battled hard for P3 but in the end we lost out to Piastri and Perez and we ended up finishing in P5. So hopefully we'll be able to bounce back here with a podium at the very least, maybe even a win, who knows. And we also, now that we've done the uh, the teammate renegotiations, I know exactly how much money I have to spend on facility upgrades as well. And we do three facility upgrades to boost those uh, those facilities to uh, you know spec two on the, uh, the aspects that they needed. Here's the performance index as well. You can see we've actually fallen to the sixth fastest car on the grid now, which which uh, is kind of unexpected, but the field is so tight, I really don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. It's just going to come down to individual driving styles. Our uh, like, uh, components are fine. And then here we go. There's been some driver transfers, which I actually didn't notice at first, so you're only going to see one of them at the moment, but there have been three. Uh, the first and foremost thing that you will notice is that Sergio Perez is now at Ferrari. He's left Red Bull, and he has gone to Ferrari in the space of Jahan Daruvula, who has been dropped from the sport. Much like Teo Porcher was mid-season in season four, he was dropped from Mercedes halfway through the season in his rookie season. They've done the same thing to Jahan Daruvula. He is out and he will maybe be back at a later date in a later season. Maybe he won't, who knows? But what that has meant for the wider driver market is that a spot has opened up at Red Bull. And what that has caused, that you will see as we get into the race weekend, is that it has opened up a spot for the last team on the grid who had the same driver lineup in season one has finally been broken apart. And that of course was Gasly and Ocon. Ocon has moved to Red Bull. He is now the number two driver at Red Bull to George Russell. And we will be seeing if Esteban Ocon can maybe pick up some podiums and some wins in the Red Bull car. And in the Alpine, of course, that has freed up a slot and they've taken a chance on a rookie. It is the Mercedes rookie of Frederick Vesti who has, uh, has taken the reins where Esteban Ocon has left the team. So we'll see if he can uh, hold a candle to Gasly in that Alpine, which at the moment is honestly one of the worst cars on the grid. You see Gasly and Ocon getting knocked out in Q1 all the time. I think that, uh, that Ocon will be glad to be in the Red Bull, which hopefully will be more indicative of his talents. Don't forget that at this stage in my team career mode, with all the drivers who've already retired from the sport, you know, Sainz, Hamilton, Bottas, all of these guys, the Ocon and Gasly are actually some of the highest rated drivers on the grid after Verstappen, Russell, Norris, Leclerc. It is, it is Ocon and Gasly at this point. Perez, his skills have kind of, uh, kind of fallen off a little bit. Obviously his reputation precedes him still. And um, as a result, he still gets pretty top draw drives like in the, uh, the, the Ferrari. But then again, uh, he is also pretty solid. So, uh, he, you know, he's doing well this season. He's picked up a win. You, uh, you couldn't really ask for much more than that, I suppose. But we will see now what we can do as we get into qualifying for the Belgian Grand Prix. Don't forget, it's a sprint weekend. So this will determine the position that I start the sprint. And that will determine the position when I finish the sprint where I will start the actual Grand Prix itself. We do a 139.9, which is the fastest time of the session at the time of setting it on these fresh soft compound tires. But we're definitely going to go again just to really solidify our performance. Uh, currently in P6, so no damage, no danger of going through and, uh, oh, sorry, no danger of going out, I should say. We're definitely going through. And uh, it's going to be about a 3 tenth improvement, 139.6. Is that good enough for P1 in the session, though? No, not quite. It's P2. So hopefully we'll find a little bit of improvement from there as we make our way through into Q2. 
And Max Verstappen was actually the one who went fastest there, about a tenth faster than me. Ocon up in P4 in his first race for the Red Bull, and then P8 for Perez as well. Leclerc made it through in P7, but knocked out. We're back to our regularly scheduled programming. It's Joe Stroll, Fittipaldi, Porsche, De Vries, and starting from the back in his debut race is the Dane of Frederick Vesti. Only four thousandths of a second behind Nick De Vries, but in last place nonetheless so uh, hopefully he can make his way forward i would like to see him do well i uh, was a big fan of frederick vesti in his junior career in real life so it'd be nice to see him do well in this save as well if you uh, haven't figured it out by now i do have some sort of strange bias towards scandinavians i can't really explain it myself but you know support Hauga, support magnuson support Vesti, anyone who comes from that region of the world uh, is going to be somebody who I'm going to be uh, cheering for. We do a 139.9 on a used set of soft compound tyres and hopefully we can get a bit of improvement on the uh, on the fresh soft compound tyres as we make our way onto our final flying lap of the session as we go through the bus stop chicane you can see we're only about two tenths up so it's only going to be a bit of a minor improvement. We were P6 so it doesn't matter too much. It's 139.8 so we actually go slower than we did in Q1 and as a result we only get p5 on this occasion as i think a few cars have taken a step forward including alex albon up there in p1 and charles leclerc in p2 into the 139 fours now meanwhile ocon has been knocked out along with verstappen out qualified by his teammate sergio perez reunited of course those two drivers at ferrari used to be teammates at red bull and also knocked out in q2 here is norris russell magnuson and doing so a few championship contenders the likes of norris and russell and arguably verstappen although i'd say he's not been that strong this season apart from that one win he had in miami um, they do have allegedly the fastest car on the grid at the moment ferrari but they definitely aren't putting that to good use um, while aston martin are dennis hauger and logan Sargent making it through to q3 again they have the second fastest car on the grid at the moment and they are working with what they've got so um, yeah, good performances all round from those guys. We'll see what we can do now in Q3, 140.0 in our first flying lap on a used set of soft compound tires. We'll see what we can do on the fresh tires on our next flying lap. And as we make our way into the final sector, you can see we're already almost seven tenths up. I think we have a good lap in us here. Yuki Sonoda currently running in P4. We'll see if we can knock him down to P5. For Leclerc, it will be no higher than P5, P6 if I manage to beat him here and you can see the improvement keeps on coming we went faster through that very fast section compared to uh, our previous lap we lost a little bit of time to the bus stop chicane maybe but actually we've got a better exit so it's a 9 tenth improvement 139.1 and that yes, is good enough for pole position very very happy with that one hopefully we'll be able to convert that not only into a sprint victory but maybe a victory in the Grand Prix as well for tomorrow's race but before we begin let's have a quick look at those who will be fronting the grid. Robinson, Oscar Piastri, and Alex Albon. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. Running you through the driver grid order for today's exciting sprint. Robinson lines up on pole position, and Oscar Piastri completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Albon, Perez, Sonoda, Leclerc, Hauger, Sargent, Liam Lawson, Gasly, Ocon, Verstappen, Norris, Russell, Magnussen, Dewan, Joe, Stroll. Fittipaldi, Teo Porcher, De Vries, and Frederick Vesti. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We will soon find out. For some reason recently in these intro sections, they've just been flat out refusing to speak 
causing me to fill time. You see Oscar Piastri starting on the front row there with me. He's yet to have a victory this season. He got pole in the last race, but the victory went the way of Dennis Hauger at the French Grand Prix, who got his first race victory, not only of the season, but of his entire career. So it'd be interesting to see whether Oscar Piastri maybe okay, can battle me for the victory here, get his board, first so win of the season. He has, of course, had wins in previous today, seasons please. as well. But, uh, I mean, look, even Kevin Magnussen has looked in the hunt for the victory here this season. I'm not sure that he's actually had one. I can't remember if he had the sprint victory in Baku or not. I feel like that went the way of someone else, but I can't remember who it was. But um, I think that was Perez, wasn't it? Perez was the king of the streets that weekend, if I remember correctly. So, uh, yeah, McLaren winless so far this season, which is not what you would expect given the quality of their driver right, lineup, Piastri and Magnussen. You would think that those guys gears, would be so able to uh, would be able to get a pretty, you know, uh, a nailed on victory at some point this season. But, you know, we're only halfway through, so there's still, of course, an opportunity for them to do it, and we will see whether they're able to or not. We are lining up on the grid now Superb in our there, grid slot, 0.1 meters. Very, very happy with that. It's uh, not very often I achieve that usually because Keep I'm not brave enough. Sometimes I'll overshoot it. But here we go. We are now ready for the sprint as the lights come on and the lights go out and we've had a good getaway compared to Oscar Piastri. He bogs down a little bit in the second phase and he might come under a bit of pressure there from Alex Albon in the Mercedes. You can see they're battling away, swapping places a little bit. I don't know who's going to win out in that battle overall. Albon and Piastri, of course, used to be teammates for half a season at, uh, at McLaren back in season four, I believe it was, when uh, Albon then got the call up halfway through the season to go to Mercedes instead. So, uh, yeah, no love lost between those guys, I'm sure. Piastri has managed to win out in that battle, and he goes for a little bit of a look up the inside of me. But ultimately, he has to back out to allow me to go through the, uh, the chicane there. And, uh, well, not much happened then for the, uh, the remainder of the, uh, the first half of the sprint race up until lap five, when you can see that Piastri has managed to keep me honest, as has Alex Albon. Sergio Perez a couple tenths down, but, uh, you know, still looking pretty good in his first race for Ferrari. Uh, up in P4, keeping the former Ferrari man Leclerc at bay. And Oscar Piastri, meanwhile, has managed to make an overtake on me into P1 in the Kemmel Straight. I almost go into the back of him there, looking for a move up the inside into the corner. And, uh, well, we're going to have to get a move done nice and quickly here. And we do exactly that as we go round the outside. Will we be able to hold on to this one? Do we possess the requisite amount of grip? It appears we do. But we have a pretty compromised run through the next uh, couple of corners which might invite Piastri back into the fight, into Puan. We'll see who wins on this occasion. It's going to be Piastri by the looks of things. Has the superior grip on the inside line. Alex Albon even potentially looking for a move on me here. Fortunate not to come under pressure from him. And this time I played a little bit safer. Don't almost career into the back of Oscar Piastri. And we're just going to bide our time and wait until we are able to get past him properly. And we've already swapped places a couple times here on this lap. Will we swap places another time? myself and Piastri. You can see I'll be closing him down with the battery a little bit on the run into Blanchemont. We've closed the gap to less than two tenths now and you can see the gap is closing and closing and closing down to one tenth, less than a tenth. Are we going to go for a move up the inside at the bus stop chicane? We break just a tiny bit later and with the outside line he has to give us a little bit of space. So Oscar Piastri I think here is going to lose out, especially since I've got that DRS as well. I don't see how he's going to be able to hold on to it. So that was a nice battle that we had with Oscar Piastri over the uh, the victory here on the uh, on the sprint day in Belgium but it might not be over just yet actually moving on to lap seven I think Oscar Piastri might be about to have another go at me here he will have that DRS only four tenths is the gap not sure I'll be able to uh, hold him off when he's got that amount of margin over me the only thing that we've got working in our favor is that we've saved the battery quite nicely through these last two laps but the gap is closing rapidly you can see he gets a full car length ahead for a split second but ultimately he doesn't quite have enough confidence in his braking ability to make the overtake stick and Oscar Piastri is going to have to settle for P2 and unless he can make an overtake in an unconventional spot towards the end of the race either through Blanchemont or into the bus stop chicane which to be fair he has closed me down by three tenths already uh, through this, uh, this sort of straight with one corner I guess that you kind of take flat out um, yeah, ultimately he wasn't able to quite close us down through Blanchemont. I had the superior run, through the bus stop chicane I had the superior run, and that has allowed me to take the victory here in the sprint race 
and set me up very nicely starting from P1 in the Grand Prix as well that will mean and I'm hoping that we'll be able to score the maximum gambit of points this weekend which will be 34 if we can get faster slap as well but very happy with that performance in the sprint. So let's review the driver's standings. Robinson increases their championship lead. With the sprint wrapped up, we now have our grid line up for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Well, Pierre Gasly may have been laughing before, but Esteban Ocon had the last laugh as he scores his first points for Red Bull. And we will see what we can do as we get into the Grand Prix. It's the Belgian Grand Prix, the site of the maiden victory of the Jordan team in 1998. The venue that Michael Schumacher made his debut in Formula One. There is so much history here amongst the beautiful nature. Today, we go racing through the Ardennes Forest. 4.3 miles of long straights, fast corners, and huge elevation changes. The turn one hairpin at La Source is straight into Eau Rouge, eventually climbing into Radion. It is an opening salvo like no other. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Robinson lines up on pole position, and Oscar Piastri completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Albert, Perez, Leclerc, Hauger, Sargent, Ocon, Gasly, Verstappen, Russell, Liam Lawson, Sonoda, Magnussen, Fittipaldi, Stroll, Dewan, Joe, De Vries, Vesti, Teo Porcher, and Lando Norris starts from the back of the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Now, can I get your take on Max Verstappen? And we welcome former Formula One driver Anthony Davidson to the commentary box for this one. And tell us how it feels when you have had a great win last time out and you're carrying it into the next race. There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. Yeah, I'm not sure if they were talking about me getting the sprint victory there or Dennis Hauger getting the uh, French Grand Prix victory in the last actual Grand Prix. Uh, we will, I, I mean, I guess we won't find out, but um, certainly I will be gunning for a double victory here, much like we had last season. You might remember if you did watch season five of my My Team Career Mode. And if you didn't, um, you can definitely go and check out the recap video, which uh, will catch you up on everything that happened the in the previous the season. Start. I do Can't them at the end of down. every single season. This one should be no different. So if you did miss out on the start of the season, um, there will be a, a recap video coming your way at the end of the season okay, in a couple of weeks when, nice we, uh, when we finish edge, off. Once again, we get a pretty good parking starts. there. A few cars around us starting on soft compound tyres. Okay, I hope so that those guys aren't too much of a threat here. We will find out what their pace is like on those soft compound tyres compared to us on the mediums but I just didn't feel like the soft medium strategy was going to work for us here today but we'll see if this strategy works as the lights come on and once again the lights go out and we've had another good getaway compared to Oscar Piastri I said that thing that whole spiel about the soft compound tyres but look at that Alex Albon losing three places almost off the start there We're almost loses like out to Logan well Sargent who also is on the soft compound tyres Sergio Perez meanwhile on the mediums mode has gained a position. That's unheard of, really. I can't believe he's managed to do that. But we are not having anywhere near as clean of a getaway compared to what we had in the sprint. Oscar Piastri already all over the back of us. And I think Sergio Perez might go for a bit of a look up our inside as well. We're squeezed to the middle. This is the worst place to be, but we break a little bit later. We go to the inside. I think we made the narrowest of contacts with Sergio Perez there. It should hopefully be okay for both of us. I didn't pick up any damage. I hope he didn't, but I really just had nowhere to go there. I had Oscar Piastri on my outside, which was going to switch to the inside. I had no choice but to just try and take the corner as best I could and hope that Sergio Perez backed out of it so we've held off Oscar Piastri for the time being but will he close us down we're not very strong through sector two on the setup that I'm running I don't think it's particularly well geared for uh, for high speed corners so we'll see whether Oscar Piastri is going to put some pressure on us here or not as uh, as he comes right close to me actually less than two tenths of a second as we make our way round the, uh, the penultimate corner 
before we get our way into sector three and Oscar Piastri right on the back of me. I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe goes for a bit of a move here. You can see he's had a much better exit from the corner than I have there and he's actually going to go for a move before we get to Blanchemont. We're going to be wheel to wheel. Will I be able to hang it around the outside through Blanchemont? Yes, somehow I will in the fast high speed corner. We're wheel to wheel on the entry to the bus stop chicane. Oscar Piastri slightly ahead at the moment but I will have the outside line for the next corner. This is amazing racing between myself and Oscar Piastri. I'm losing my voice. I'm losing my breath trying to commentate this and he's coming back at me once again I thought I was in the clear when we got into the main straight but he's up my outside this time I got the inside into the first corner and maybe finally he'll have to admit defeat for the time being but we've got the okay. Kemmel straight coming up soon what this has done is this has kept Sergio Perez in the fight I think after that contact he lost a bit of confidence lost a bit of time came under some pressure from Charles Leclerc but he's right with us again now and will I be coming under double pressure into this first corner once again Oscar Piastri tries to go to the outside but it doesn't quite work so he switches it to the inside wheel to wheel through the corner at the end of the Kemmel straight and finally, I think I may just have a little bit of respite to calm down, catch my breath, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, not come under that kind of pressure again. That was a, you know, a, a battle that continued over the course of more than one lap between myself and Oscar Piastri. That was very, very intense, and I don't Good think job. it's over yet as we make our way so onto lap three. I think the uh, with the DRS enabled, you can see how close he is. Two tenths. Sergio Perez falling away a little bit on those medium compound tyres. Not sure if maybe he's just lacking the pace in that Ferrari today or uh, if I did give him maybe a little bit of front wing damage that uh, is just kind of costing him a little bit of lap time. But if that is the case, he's definitely holding up the cars behind quite nicely for us at the moment. So it's looking like it might be a bit of a two horse race here between myself and Oscar Piastri and hopefully it will be me winning out much like I did last year when we were in a battle with Esteban Ocon who of course at the time was in the Alpine and uh, we need to be careful not to get too many more of those track limits warnings because the last thing we want to do is get a penalty to really ruin this race for us. So as we make our way now onto lap six, you can see Oscar Piastri has stayed with us. Perez has fallen down the order quite significantly as uh, Hauger, last race's winner, makes his way up to P5. Oscar Piastri looking for a move up the inside into the into the corner once again at the end of the Kemmel straight and uh, just can't quite make it happen in this scenario. Oscar Piastri though, he is desperate for this first win. He's not had one so far this season. He is so desperate to get a win this season because he's had so many opportunities to do it. He's been on the podium. He's been right there on so many occasions, but he's just never quite managed to pick up the victory. And finally, as we make our way to lap seven, he's looking like he might be able to get it done. He's made the overtake on me and I am just gonna have to try and stay with him as best as I can. We've, we've been overtaken, we're going to have to bide our time. I don't think the tyres have the performance in them to go for my signature move around the outside of this corner, which I believe is no name, I could be wrong. Um, and uh, yeah, Oscar Piastri is just, uh, is just definitely going to try and extend his advantage, especially in the, that section of the track that he was faster than me, but he couldn't quite get far enough away to avoid me hounding him a little bit. We dummy him to the inside. I have no idea why he defended there, because if he'd have defended on the outside, he would have absolutely, absolutely held the position. But instead, he decided to basically defend fresh air, give me a free route round the outside, and we've retaken P1 off of Oscar Piastri here on lap 8 of 22 of the Belgian Grand Prix. Meanwhile, on lap 8, this was happening to my former teammate Enzo Fittipaldi. Once again, he is out of the race. I don't know if he was running in a strong position this time compared to last time it happened. I remember him retiring from P5, I believe it was in the British Grand Prix, which was, you know, really, really horrible for him because he was having a great race up until that point. And on lap 9, we are finally going to be coming into the pit lane for a set of hard compound tyres and hopefully a, uh, a very cinematic and enigmatic finish to this race. I, um, I don't know whether we'll be able to undercut Piastri here or not, it really just depends. I think I'm going to be coming out in quite a lot of traffic actually by the looks of things. Basically the entire field is bunched together from where Sergio Perez with his, what I can only assume was damage, holding up the field quite significantly. It does mean there's a, a big okay, gap to all of the cars the behind us now. Perfect so hopefully we will be able to we'll be able to cut through this pack of cars complete. quite quickly. See I don't know how many cars we're gonna have to overtake. We've stayed ahead of Nick De Vries here and uh, we've got I think about seven or eight cars that we've got to try and get ahead of here. So hopefully we can get ahead of them nice and quickly. We'll have the DRS on Sonoda, but of course he's going to have the DRS on his former teammate Pierre Gasly as well. It feels strange saying that, his former teammate. That was a long time ago at this point, pre this game coming out even. But Sonoda and Gasly, they were teammates for three years 
at uh, Alpha Tauri. Neither of them there anymore, of course. And I'm going to try and get an overtake done on one of them and then get an overtake done on the other as we go around the outside of Yuki Tsunoda. But have we gone just a bit too deep to make this move? No, the tyre grip imperious here in Belgium compared to Sonoda's nearly 10 lap old soft compound tyres so we're going to chase after his former teammate Pierre Gasly now and a man who I thought would have been his teammate at some point Max Verstappen as well uh, you know when they were when they were both affiliated with Red Bull meanwhile speaking of Red Bull Ocon gone off the track very nearly we crashed directly into the back of him we were very close not to avoid damage there he's held up his former teammate Pierre Gasly they were teammates just one race ago and now Pierre Gasly in the Alpine is going to have a real task on his hands to try and defend from me. We're going to try and go for a move at Blanchemont or maybe even before we get to Blanchemont. Will it be around the outside this time or will it be up the inside? I think we're going to stick it up the inside. He does not have the grip to hold on around the outside of me. A few cars coming into the pit lane here as well. That will help us gain some positions. I don't know if anyone, either of these two Red Bulls are coming in. Sergeant on the uh, soft compound tyres in the Aston Martin is coming in and now we're going to try and close down the damaged Perez. Albon is pitted, Leclerc is pitted, we should be able to get ahead of both of those guys as well. We're up into P5, it'll be P4 once we get ahead of Sergio Perez but through turn one I tried to send it around the outside, I knew he'd be slow but unfortunately he was not slow enough for me to uh, look for a move on him so we're going to have to try and do it with the DRS as we go up Radion we still can't get past him. I thought about sending a move on him there. If you've watched my league racing videos, you might remember I made an overtake on Phil's skills up Radion, which was probably one of the finest overtakes I've ever made in that league, I can't lie. But um, yeah, on this occasion, I didn't quite have the position to go for the overtake on Sergio Perez, but we're now gonna try and overtake his teammate, Max Verstappen, around the outside of No Name and see if we can get the move done. Oh, we were so close to not making that move happen. We just about managed to get the space to allow him to uh, to make some space for us. And now we're gonna set off after another one of Verstappen's former teammates, uh, Dennis Hauger, but I think that he may pit before we get to that point. So as we speed up through this lap, I imagine we will now see both Piastri and Hauger pit. I don't know why Hauger stayed out so long on those soft compound tires. 11 laps, it feels like way too much, but maybe he's gonna absolutely cook on a set of mediums for the last 11 laps now we will see what Dennis Alba is made of and we'll see what Oscar Piastri is made of and also what gap we're looking at as he comes out the pits he was about 16 seconds ahead of us as he came into the pits and as he exits the pits he's just about two seconds behind us so actually not the gap I would have hoped to have opened given that I did a two lap undercut on the Australian driver but unfortunately that was all I could get. So on lap 15, you can see that I'm keeping okay, him honest, so but uh, I think he is starting to close the gap seconds. here a little bit. And I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe came under a bit of late pressure from Oscar Piastri here in the Belgian Grand Prix. I think Leclerc, Albon and Hauger in that little three car battle for the podium may be just a little bit too far away from us to really put any pressure on towards the end of the race. But it is a long lap, so catching by a second a lap on a faster compound of tyre is possible. But will that compound of tyre last to the end of the race, I'm not sure. Meanwhile, the gap to Piastri is closed a little bit. We're down to just about 1.4, 1.5 seconds now. And um, yeah, he is definitely, definitely getting closer to me. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had a bit more of a fight with Oscar Piastri before the end of the race. And we will see now as we make our way onto lap 18 that he is within that DRS range, just four tenths the gap between myself and Oscar Piastri. And will it be close enough for him to go for an overtake into the corner at the end of the Camel Straight. No, it will not on this occasion. Oscar Piastri is going to have to settle for, uh, for P2 still here in the Belgian Grand Prix. He's running out of laps at this point. Only four more laps for him to make an overtake if he's going to make it. And we will see what he can do as we make our way onto the next lap. You can see he is quite close this time, four tenths-ish. And he's closing down quite rapidly on the run down to Eau Rouge. And up Radion, we'll see how the delta changes. We've definitely gone a little bit faster through Radion than he has, but he immediately gains the time back on the exit of the corner. I'm not sure if he's got more battery, but he blitzes past me with that DRS, with that battery. It's a non-contest. Oscar Piastri, with three laps left in this race, takes the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix, and we are really going to have to put the hammer down now if I want to win this race. This has been probably the most exciting battle for the win I've had all season and I cannot wait to see how this one unfolds. Obviously, I want to be the one winning it, but with just two laps to go now as we start lap 21, we are gonna have to really do something quite special here. We're not very close to Oscar Piastri either. You can see the gap is about six tenths, five tenths, something like that. We are closing him down quite dramatically from the exit of the first corner, but will it be enough or will he have saved up enough battery to think about 
you know, deploying it quite strategically to avoid being overtaken by me in the camel straight. We will see. We're closing him down very quickly. We're going to dummy him to the inside, much like we did in the sprint race. And that might just be his undoing once again. Round the outside, I go. And if he defended to the outside, who knows? Maybe Oscar Piastri would have done enough to Wait, avoid Wait, losing the lead. So but now he's going to have one more opportunity, one more lap after this one to go for the lead of the race. And if he can't take the lead of the race on the final lap, then he is going to have to settle for second best. Once again, how many times has Oscar Piastri been in this position where he realistically should have had the win this season, but it's just not happened for him. For whatever reason, he just couldn't grab a Grand Prix victory. And as we make our way onto the final lap, what is this gap looking like between myself and Piastri right now? It's about six tenths behind. And he is closing me down. I think he's burning some battery on the run down to Eau Rouge. We go up Radion. Is he close enough to look for a move? I think we might come under some pressure from him here, but I don't know if it'll be enough, especially as long as I hold this outside line that I know I've been superior through. He's going to take a look up the inside. He goes for a bit of a half-hearted move. We're wheel to wheel through the corner. He definitely wanted to stay in that fight, but Oscar Piastri, he may just lose out here. Now he's going to have to overtake me in an unconventional spot if he wants any hope of making this overtake happen. I don't think it's going to occur for Oscar Piastri on this occasion. And as we make our way around the final few sort of, um, I don't know what you call them, slow corners of the lap before we get into the more high speed corners, I think there's really no way that Oscar Piastri is going to be able to do this now unless he can go for a move into Blanchemont, much like I did on him on the uh, the first lap of the race, don't forget. We went round the outside of him at Blanchemont. Could we see something similar here from Oscar Piastri? All I've got to do is just absorb this pressure for a little while longer and we will be the winner of the Belgian Grand Prix for the second year in a row. But uh, Oscar Piastri, look, he is very, very close. He's closing me down. The gap now is coming down to less than two tenths of a second. We go around Blanchemont. We've got a little bit faster. But does he have enough battery in the tank to go for a move up the inside into the bus stop chicane? No, he doesn't. And that might just be his undoing. It's going to be a drag race of line. He will have that drag reduction system. But I don't think it will be enough. And we are going to cross the line first. Take the victory here in the Belgian Grand Prix for the That's second year in a row. In and we've won row. the sprint race as well. Job. We take almost the maximum number of points bar the fastest lap point. 33 points for the weekend. Extend our championship advantage. What a race. What a banger that was. Many doubted whether they could pull off the win here at Spa Francorchamps. But they've done so in spectacular style. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Well, what a thrilling end to an incredible Grand Prix weekend. Our top three finishers should be incredibly happy with what they were able to achieve out there today absolute cinema absolute cinema that race that is why we love racing that's why we love this game and that's why we love formula one for races like that it was a race long battle with oscar piastri there was strategy involved and there was just good clean racing involved as well charles leclerc picks up p3 on the podium it's another great performance from him to get himself onto the podium but myself and oscar piastri will be taking all the plaudits for delivering an absolute banger of a race maybe the best race of the season so far let me know in the comments what you thought of that one so let's review the updated driver's standings robinson increases their championship lead so let's discuss and who would you say is a contender for your driver of the day I have to give it to Robinson. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. The owner-drivers team moved to the top of the table. It was also a strong Grand Prix from Haas F1 this weekend. Fantastic work from the American team to move themselves further up the table. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula 1. Be sure to join us for the next one. Well, we are now 16 points clear in the Drivers' Championship. 70 points clear in the constructors championship things are really starting to look quite good for us now and well i don't know if anyone is going to be able to catch us unless they uh, can do something quite drastic you know that was a uh, that was a real great performance from us it could have gone very differently oscar piastri had a chance to win the sprint he had a chance to win the race he couldn't do either in the end and he might live to regret that but somehow oscar piastri is not even that far down 
in the championship fight. That speaks to how consistent his performances have been this season. He's managed to deliver good performance after good performance, just no wins. You know, Perez has had a win when he was in the Red Bull. Uh, Leclerc has had a win. He had the win in Saudi Arabia, of course. It feels like a long time ago at this point. Um, but still, there remain only two repeat winners so far this season. Myself, as I pick up what I believe is win number five now this season, and Lando Norris, who has got two wins this season. Other than that, nobody has won more than one race. Hauga even has won a race this season, which, might I say, was an absolutely blind performance from him he held off, off his former teammate Max Verstappen for the entire second stint at that French Grand Prix if you didn't watch that previous race go and watch that one as well because that again was a classic but um, not as good as this one this is by far probably up there with the best races I think I've driven on this game in terms of how fun that battle was with Oscar Piastri I really didn't know who was going to win a lot of the time when I'm racing in these uh, in, in these races I, I kind of can get a picture of whether it's going to be myself or somebody else taking the victory quite early on based on the sort of pace that we're showing compared to them this time not an absolute clue I didn't know I didn't know whether Oscar Piastri was going to overtake me and drive off into the sunset or whether I was going to be able to stay with him unfortunately on this occasion we were able to stay with him but uh, I mean look that was a battle for the ages between myself and Oscar Piastri in fact there's even some footage I didn't use here of me and him battling into uh, Blanchemont there which uh, I ended up winning out on as well so uh, that just goes to show how much of a, uh, a sort of incredible ding dong battle this was between myself and uh, an Oscar Piastri which ultimately ended in glory for myself and ended in heartbreak for Oscar Piastri as he still fails to win that first race this season for McLaren you know they have had they have had lots of success in the past but they have not managed to contend for a championship so far this season Lando Norris when he won his world championship he was already in that Mercedes which he's been in for this is his third season now at that team and uh, yeah we will see how uh, how his performances can continue to unfold as the uh, as the the season progresses whether he can get himself involved in the championship fight he's not really been a presence this season uh, despite the fact he's had two wins he's just been incredibly inconsistent and again I don't think he had the greatest performance this weekend so uh, yeah it's going to be uh, a really interesting situation to see who's up there in the championship fight come the end of the season. Will anyone else, apart from Russell, be able to challenge myself and Leclerc? Next race is, of course, Zandvoort, which for those of you who don't remember, that was a really tricky race for me last season. We finished something like 14th, I think. So this could be a chance to allow our rivals back into the championship if we're not very careful and deliver a strong performance there. But that is going to be it for this video. So if you enjoyed, please make sure you like and subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.